You guys ever seen a speckled colored bison? Looky here. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. These red dogs are starting to lose that red color. I want to show you the transformation that these guys are going through and how long it takes to lose that red color. I also got a lot of updates for you. I've had lots of questions here lately about some uh, certain topics going on with the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch, but I want to cover some of those with you. I've got a couple of things to do today besides talking about these calves, but one, I'm going to get rid of this. this. I think it's time for this to go. You guys know Dunbar loves, this is this is his toy right here. This guy right here. So Dunbar likes to take the, the plastic part out of it, which is right here. Every day you can see this thing is just not gonna make it. This is one of the very first troughs I bought when I first started. This thing has taken a beating, but I'm very impressed. I do like the tartar. It's holding up really well. So what I did, was I went and bought another one and I'm gonna put it out here. But it's time for this to go. And this is what you have to do. You've gotta tie it up so he doesn't take it completely out in the pasture. Look at the difference in color of those babies. You can see how dark this calf is. This is our first born calf. Uh, she's actually our very first heifer calf that was ever born. Mama's right here. This is Bell Star, our feisty cow now. But her baby is, I mean, she is the same color as her mama. She was born June 3rd. Our little bull was born June 17th. He's over there with Eleanor, one of our fan favorites. And then here, trying to get in the trough, is Quapaws. He was born July 1st. So you can really see the difference between 14 days apart and a month apart. But these calves are growing 
and their hair is changing and they're starting to molt that young coat and transitioning into young adulthood. The best way that we're gonna grow this herd and the fastest way is by having heifer calves. So we want more and more heifer calves. Does it take long for a red dog season to, to disappear? So something I don't talk about very much are these little calves. And one of the questions I always get is, now that I have these calves part of this herd that are from Dunbar, which is our main bull, now that we have them here, we're gonna keep the heifers because as you guys know, I wanna grow the herd and that's, that's my main objective is to get this herd where it's capable of actually making some revenue. Guys, it takes a long time for bison. They can't reproduce until they're two. Get bred at two years old in the late summer, early fall. They carry that baby nine to 10 months. They have the baby. You can't really sell that baby until if you wanna sell calves at six or seven months old after you wean them or you let them grow up and, and you've got them get them in the market range of weight, which is at least over a thousand pounds before you want to slaughter them for meat or, or process them. So there's, there's, a, there's a process to this and it takes a long time. I'm only in year three. I started this in March, 2018. So I still have a little ways to go. I have two older calves that I had last year. They're yearlings now. And I'm, I'm about, um, I'm really close to deciding what I'm gonna do with those. Uh, two bulls. We don't need more bulls in here because Dunbar is going to do the job. What am I going to do with these calves? I've got two heifers and one little bull uh, from 2020. I'm going to have to make a decision on what I'll do with the bull. I ain't worried about it now. They're only like three or four months old. But what am I going to do with these little heifers? Yes, they're going to stay in the herd. But the main question is, which I get all the time, can the sire of these calves breed back to their dad, to Dunbar. Yes, I understand a lot of you have questions about that. You question that, I, I get it, I understand. That's kind of an interesting subject. It's always been a topic in the bison industry, but it really shouldn't be that big a topic because here's why. So I want you to think about whenever they started to decline. When these bison started to decline, in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And a lot of the conservationists that started realizing that the bison were disappearing, they took them and they started catching them. What did you start to see is these conservation herds. You start to see these herds where people were capturing them out in the wild, bringing them in, and they started pinning them up and started to raise them because they were trying to protect the bison. Well, what happens whenever you have 20 something bison, what do you think is gonna happen? There's gonna be some interbreeding. A lot of those small populations of bison had to interbreed. How do you think those herds grew over time? How do you think that they are where they are today? There had to have been some breed back. I know that's hard to understand, but I believe that's the way it is. Or you can ask a lot of bison producers, how did they get to this point? Well, when there's less than a thousand animals in the entire country in the late, 1800s, early 1900s, they had to breed back so that they could reproduce and have the main herds and the large herds that we have today. So there you go. Um, I hope I explained it enough and I hope I covered that because that is a question I always get. Do I know everything about the bison? No, I do not. I've talked to people that have been in the bison world for a long time and they have done a lot of research on it and I've been a lot of places and I've talked to those people and I think that's a fact. I think... So we're gonna keep those heifers and we want to grow this herd. I know it seems weird, but you know what? These bison are still the amazing animals that they are and will always be. They're tough, the strong has been naturally selected over time. That process is what we have today. So they've been on the garlic for a little bit. You can see the indentions and they've been getting it pretty good. Um, and one of the things I wanted to show you, somebody asked about these little tubs. Um, there is uh, holes down in the bottom of this tub where water will drain underneath 
these containers so that they don't, these blocks don't sit in water. Time for you to go. Didn't survive. Also want to give you an update on this. Well, I don't really know how much attention he's been giving this thing. I think I'm gonna have to make some adjustments to it. I think I'm gonna have to lower it. I, I need to set up a trail camera to try to catch him. Now I've had a lot of good advice from you guys, um, but the feed trough that he always hits is obviously low to the ground. So that may explain why he likes to hit that and maybe not in the air. So maybe we'll try lowering it and see if that helps. Flies are still around right now. Even though we have that garlic block out, I've been re using this i've been putting more fluid on it but i came up with a different idea this time i started using a different technique for our rub this time i'm gonna do something different here we go so i think this is way better i got a mixture here. This is a way better technique than spraying it. Jeez. There's not a drop left in there. It soaked it up quick. But this will help along with the garlic block. A little more fly prevention. Thank you guys for watching us. A lot of good updates, a lot of things happening around here. It's always fun to see those babies and, and check up on them. I know I don't talk about them a whole lot, but they are pretty cute. But it's crazy how they're born with that red hair and then it doesn't take long, three or four months, and that process starts to change and they can turn brown just like their mom and dad really fast. So pretty neat to watch that transformation. There's not a lot of animals that do that that take that transformation color like these bison do. Thank you guys.